Hello, and welcome to this Georgia Department of Education Social Studies video on creating activities in Velocity. Velocity is the Georgia Department of Education's new student-facing activity application that's within the Inspire platform. So to get started, you do need to open up the Georgia Inspire website. To get there, you'll want to go in through your statewide longitudinal data system. So essentially go into however you get to your statewide longitudinal data system and log into your portal. And you should see a button that says Georgia Connects Preview. Click that button. And then when you open that up, you should see a little hand holding a light bulb that is the Georgia Inspire platform. Once you come in here and you're signed in, you're ready to get started. You want to go to your building block tab. This is your content collection. Now you may just have this black one, the My Content Sandbox. I have a bunch of others because I've created those and you can create those too, but that's a different video. So for now, we're gonna go into the My Content Sandbox and I want to open up Velocity and I'm going to create a new one. So I need to choose to add content. I wanna create new. I wanna create new Velocity Student Activity. I wanna give it a name. I'm gonna call it My Great Activity. You might want something a little more descriptive click on Create Activity, and we're ready to get started. If I decide I don't like that title and I want to change it, I can click here and edit it. I can also add some student instructions. I can choose whether I want to allow students to retry. I can choose a lot of things here. You can also align to standards. So I can click here and it'll bring up standards, and I can choose which standards I want to align this activity to. So I'm just going to randomly open up some standards here. And I can say I want to align it to this standard and this element. And you see it comes in right there. We're going to choose Save and Close. And we see our standards are here. And I didn't add any student instructions, but you certainly can. We're ready to start creating the activity. So we're going to click on Add a Student Interaction. And I have some things I can choose from. The first category is to interact with the learning content. So this is basically the way that we give students the information we want them to work with. This could be a reading passage, this could be images, it could be a map, it could be a number of things. Your choices are freeform content. This is quite simply where you can enter texts, images, links, tables. You can even put videos in here. You can do all sorts of things in here. It's freeform content. So I can start typing. Please read the following. And I would add stuff in here for them to read. I can put some pictures in here. I can either paste them in or I can go to my drive and choose something. So I'm going to go to my picture file. I'm going to go to my images for lessons and I'm going to choose that image. And I get to choose what size I want it to come in. I'm going to choose extra large. And there it is. I can put labels on this image if I want. So I can choose that I want label A. I want to label the sky. Maybe we want to talk about the grasslands, and then finally we want to talk about the buffalo. I could add fill in the blanks to the images. All of these things I can also add to the passage, so I can have them have to fill in a blank here. Uh, the correct answer is this is a buffalo. I can have, it calls it sparkle, but it's really velocity. I can have velocity to determine how many letters the student has to fill in, or I can choose that. If I deselect this, then I get to choose. I want them to fill in all but one. So I'm going to set it at six. And then feedback is what the correct answer is. I'm going to tell them the correct answer was Buffalo. You don't have to fill that in. You can leave that blank so that it can be inquiry based and it can be whatever the student decides and not a wrong or right answer. So we're going to save this. And you see it shows right now as Buffalo. I can move it. Let's put it underneath. Uh, I can do, uh, I can have multiple choice questions. I can actually insert a, a multiple choice question here. I'm not going to do that right now, but you could. I prefer to do the questions separate from the reading passages, but that's up to you. I could insert a video. Again, I would probably do that as a separate function, which I'm going to show you in just a minute, but you can do it here if you want. So you want to come in and look at these things. I can insert a table. We can say we want uh, a table here. Uh, let's see, Savannah is another word for, and I want them to fill this in maybe. So I'm going to put a fill in the blank. We'll say grassy plain, although I would probably do that the other way around because Savannah is the harder word, grassy plain. And again, I can say, I want to do that. I'm going to have, have to fill in all 12 and we'll write grassy plain here, save. So you get the idea. I can put a link to something. 
So I can say, let's say I want them to go to PPS Kids and you can grab the link and copy and paste it. I just put that one in because I happen to know what it is. Go here will be the text that it says and we'll insert. And now you see it's got a link. You want to come in here and just explore these possibilities. The next thing you want to take a look at is this pair of eyeglasses. This pair of eyeglasses lets you preview what this is going to look like to the student. When I'm ready, I click this and it shows me what it's going to look like. Oh, it looks like this. Oh, and here I click on the blank. Oh, and I have to type in Buffalo and I got it right. And it gives me stars for that. And then Savannah. Oh, I have to type in Grassy Plain. I'm not going to make you sit through all of that. And the cool thing is, of course, you've got the text to speech, which they can turn on or off. So that's what that freeform content would look like. We're going to go ahead and go back. Now, what's another type of interaction I can add? I can add a interactive reading passage. So this was freeform content. I can add an interactive reading passage, which essentially is the same thing. You have the same choices. You can add all of the same sorts of things. You can add, add images, maps, charts, whatever. But it has this interactive reading component where it will put blanks in the text for you. And it'll make the student go back in and fill in the blanks. Now, if you turn this on, that means it's going to choose how many and how many letters they have to fill in. So I can say I want it on. I can say I want fewer than normal blank frequency. And then I, again, can put in text in here. I can put pictures, all the same stuff. So now if I preview this, it's going to it's going to give me blanks to fill in. And of course, I have no idea what to fill in because I put in garbage. But it'll just randomly pick blanks that the student has to fill in to kind of make sure that they're paying attention as they read. All right, we we'll also have a website. So as I said, I probably wouldn't put a website in a free form comp necessarily, although actually I could see where I do that. But if I truly just want something that's a website, I can choose this. All I do is put my directions here. It starts out with view this website. I might say, go to this page and scroll to the bottom. And then here I put in my URL and you can copy and paste one in. You don't have no one. And then we just create the interaction. And you see here, here are the directions. Here's the link and it's ready to go. We can also add a video. And this is really a cool way to do it. Let me go ahead and grab a video. I'm just going to go here. We're going to learn about the three branches of government and we're just going to take this video. And the nice thing about this feature is I can choose to start at a particular point. So I don't, I can skip all of this part, all of their introduction. I want to start the video. Let's say I want to start the video right here. I can choose this start at, and then I just copy the link. And now when I go back to inspire, I'm going to choose a YouTube video. I'm going to put some directions in here. Please watch this video and I put in the YouTube ID. And remember, I told it to start at a certain point and I'm going to save it. And now let me show you how that looks to the students. The great thing about this is see, it puts them in a, a separate viewer. So they're not actually on the YouTube page. They don't have the other videos. They don't see the comments. They don't see the ads and it makes them watch the whole thing. You cannot drag it ahead and skip ahead. So I highly recommend putting your videos in this way rather than just a link in a free form passage. Okay, so that's some various ways you can interact with the content. Now look at the ways you can ask some questions. So again, I'm going to choose add a student interaction, answer a question. I have a number of choices here, a constructed response. They can write, in other words, they can type, they can draw their answer, or they can do a combination of text and draw. So I'm going to choose flex for this one. And I put in a prompt, please draw the three branches and explain. I would obviously have much better directions spelled correctly. And I say next and I can give them a model response. So I can now put in here, you know, the executive, the legislative, et cetera, et cetera, that they're going to see when they're done. So if I type in a model response, I can choose whether the students see it or not. Most of the time that I want to give them immediate feedback. So I'll choose to have them see that. I say next, we're going to save the question. Oh, and you can decide whether they get full credit ahead of time or not. Now with a constructed response, because they can type or draw whatever they want, you're going to have to come in and grade it. But there is a velocity AI that will kind of follow how you grade it and will learn from that. And it will start to grade it on its own. And then you can come in and adjust that grade. But it gets better and better at grading constructed responses if you grade them yourself first. But you don't have to turn that on. You can just have it not graded. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Please draw the three branches. I can click in here and I can type executive and I can choose to draw now and I can add that. I can, I can play with the color and all that stuff here and I can have it check my response. And it tells me I'm gonna get 12 stars, but my teacher can then change it. So I'm gonna submit that. And there's my text and there's my drawing. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Scaffolded response. 
again, that's going to be essentially a fill in the blank kind of response. It works the same way. You put in the prompt, you uh, say, please fill in the blanks below or however you want to scaffold it. And you can give them some things. Answer one. Yes. And we're going to save that. And so let's take a look at this. So you see it has the prompt, it has whatever I've put in and then whatever I've asked them to do here. We say yes, and you get the idea how that works. So we can also do interactive multiple choice. Probably what you want is just regular multiple choice. So you can come in and play with this one, but most folks just want regular multiple choice. The annotation question is really kind of cool. Let's take a quick look at that. But the thing for this is I have to have a interactive reading passage above it. So let me back up just a step here and we're going to add an interact with learning content. I have to add an interactive reading passage and then I might, you know, go grab an article from the internet and paste it in here or type something if I want. If you already have like a Word document that's got an article or you want to bring in a an article about some event or a court case or, or whatever, you would just paste that in here and we're going to save that. And then we're going to add a student interaction and we're going to add a student interaction. We're going to choose answer a question. We're going to choose annotation. And now I will say highlight the terms that are a criminal case and not a civil case or highlight the whatever you want them to highlight basically. Now let's go ahead and preview this. So now I get my reading passage and I have a little highlighter and I can just go straight to highlighting and I can also put a comment in and I can save it. Oh, and I, because it's an interactive reading passage and I didn't turn off the uh, fill in the blank stuff, you, you can tell it not to do any of that. That's how that one works. Oh, and you can also do a model. You can then paste the article in as a, the model response and you can highlight what they should have highlighted if there is indeed a wrong and right answer. Okay, so uh, that's it for those. Now the quiz questions. You've got a whole set of quiz questions. Multiple choice, I'll show you how those work. It's quite simple. You put in your which is correct, and we'll say this one, not this one. And obviously this would be a, a legitimate question, you know, who is president of the United States and Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Donald Trump. And obviously right now it's Joe Biden. So you would put, uh, let's go ahead and say that. And of course, right now, the correct answer is Biden. So here's how you choose what's the correct answer. Doesn't matter what order you put them in. I just click on this X and make it have the green check. And that's how I know that I've said that's the right answer. You can choose whether it shuffles the choices or not. So the order you put them in doesn't really matter because it'll shuffle them. But sometimes you want to turn that off. If you're going to use the same three choices over and over again, you might want them presented in the same order every time or kids will start to think that the way they moved around has something to do with what the right answer is. So you can turn this off or on. We'll say save. And then how this looks. I'll do it wrong first. It's Trump. We say submit. It says, no, that's not right. If I'd chosen Biden, it would have gone green and said, you are correct. Uh, so let's look at some more. True, false. It's basically a multiple choice. Only your choices are only true and false. You've got a multi-select, which is basically a multiple choice question. Only you can have more than one right answer. So you can have like, you know, which two are the best choices and then two of them are right and others are wrong. Uh, let's go ahead and take a quick look at that because I do want to show you that you can add choices and you can remove choices. So if I only want, uh, well, multiple select with only two choices would be kind of silly, but I only want three choices. I can get rid of a choice or I can add a choice so we can put in even more choices. I save that because we did. And then matching is really kind of cool. Put in please match the following and you would obviously get better directions than that you would say dog is a mammal and you put it in with the right answers in the right order and it shuffles them around a frog is a reptile we deviated into science here beetle is an insect okay and then we're going to we're, we want to shuffle the items or it wouldn't make any sense not to on this one we're going to go ahead and save it and let's see what this one looks like. So this is kind of cool. You see, it gives that, gives the item, and then you can say it's a mammal. And I'm going to say, I'm going to get one wrong. I'm going to say the frog is an insect. And I'm going to say the beetle is a reptile. And then I submit. And it tells me I got one right and the other two wrong. Ordering kind of works the same way. Put these in order. And then the most important answer choice is going to go here. The second most will go here. And then the third. And the nice thing about this is this can be an actual assessment where there there is something that they have to put in order. Like what are the steps in the criminal justice process? You know, first you get arrested, you get read your Miranda rights, et cetera, et cetera. Or you can have there be no right answer. And I can choose if I say they get full credit for any answer, that's the way of saying there is no right answer. I'm going to save it. 
and let's preview it. Okay, so now I can put these in order and you see it shuffled them around. This has to be second. Let's bring this down. Let's get it wrong. There we go. And it shows me third was correct, but the other two were wrong. If I had chosen that there, uh, that there was no scoring, basically, then it gives green checks for all of these and there is no right answer. There's a good reason for doing that too. And then finally, fill in a blank short answer. That one kind of speaks for itself. You've seen a number of those. So this is one exercise and it doesn't have an exercise name right now, but let's say I want to do a multi-part exercise. So I can just click down here on this plus and now I can add another exercise. Now I have the ability to change the exercise names. So let's call this the work session and perhaps the top was the introduction. So now I can come up here and I can change that. Okay, so when I decide that I am done, it saves automatic, but now I have to use it with my students. So when it's time to use with my students. I'm just going to click this button here. And there's a couple of ways I can use it with my students. They can come in through your SLDS system or, or whatever platform you're using, you know, Infinite Campus or whatever, where they're signed in. Or you can use it through Google Classroom or any other LMS like Learning Management System like Canvas or Schoology. So just very simply, I copy the link to the clipboard and put it wherever I need to. I can send it directly to them. There's any number of ways you can do this. They can also use the QR code if they're using a device. If I want to add it to Google Classroom, I very simply just click here. Now, of course, I don't have a Google Classroom, so I can't do this, but you would do that here. It's pretty simple. And then when you want to see the results, this is a separate video. We're not going to get into this now, but once some students have taken this, you click here to show the results and you can look at them either results by the students or results by the exercises. You can see each individual question that they got right or wrong. You can see how a particular student did on all of the questions. You can look at a specific question and see how the students did on it. There's a lot of choices here and it's very, very valuable information. And that's all there really is to it. Now, when this is done, I'm going to close the activity. I've got to go ahead and finish this and say done. And now it's there. When I'm ready to share this with another teacher or my team, what I want to do is I click here and I choose share activity with other educators. I copy this. I send that ID to my team and then they're going to come into their sandbox and they'll choose to add content to their sandbox. But this time they're going to say import shared, import shared velocity activity, and they will paste in the ID that you gave them and say import. I'm not going to do that because it's already in here. It's that simple. And then they can edit it if they want and they can use it with their students. I hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching.